Hi folks, welcome to Fanshawe College's virtual open house day three. Today we have the aviation sessions and I have Paul, Kelly and Tim with me, the experts from the various programs at the hangar there. My name is Riker Nyberg and I'm a member of the reputation and brand management team at Fanshawe and I'll be your host today. Just a couple points of etiquette here uh, before we get going. So you will notice that your webcam and your mics are turned off for the session. So we will not hear you screaming your questions at us. There's a question feature in your browser, which you can access if you have questions and I will be checking those. And at the end, we'll get some time for questions. Uh, if you have questions about other topics, Fanshawe related services, um, athletics, residents, anything of that nature, you can connect with us at fanshawec.ca slash connect or email us at myfuture at fanshawec.ca. So we will get started and I will hand it over to the uh, gentleman from the aviation program. All right, hello everyone. Uh, my name is Tim Anderson. Uh, I am the coordinator of the two-year aircraft maintenance and three-year aircraft maintenance and avionics program. Uh, do you want to do an introduction and go through those? Uh, my name is Kelly uh, Moffat. I am the coordinator of the uh, avionics maintenance uh, two-year program. And uh, I'm Paul Davis. I'm the coordinator for the Aircraft Structural Repair Program. That is a one-year program or eight, uh, eight, eight months. Sorry about the little technical glitch, but. <laughs> yeah, so we have our uh, AAM program, which is our standard two-year aircraft maintenance program. We also have our AVM or avionics program, which again is a two-year. We have our AVI, which is the Aircraft Maintenance and Avionics Combined Advanced Diploma, which is a three-year program. And uh, again, the Aircraft Structures, which is a one-year certificate. So the Aircraft Maintenance Program, uh, it encompasses uh, basically all of the aircraft. You learn how to uh, fix all of the systems, uh, various components um, of, multiple aircraft uh, of all different types. Uh, a good way to think about it is like the family doctor who kind of knows uh, generally all about yourself uh, and then has to uh, direct from there any specialties. Uh, our, av our avionics program, uh, it encompasses the electronic components, so navigation systems, um, digitals, uh, lighting, et cetera, uh, electronic distribution, and students learn all the aspects of uh, those different systems and components. And uh, similar to a family doctor who refer you to a specialist. So for example, a cardiovascular doctor specializes in that, avionics specializes in the electronic systems of the various aircraft. And our structural program, uh, prepare for the uh, preps you for the repair, overhaul, and modification of the aircraft structures. So you learn about components, assembly, fabrication, manufacturer repair, different types of materials, metallurgy, composites, etc. Uh, and very similar to like a plastic surgeon repairing the, the physical or cosmetic aspects of the aircraft. So our admission requirements: uh, Ontario Secondary School Diploma with courses from the college. Uh, or university level, so usually university or college uh, M or an open stream with any grade 12 English college or university again, uh, as well as mathematics, or an academic and career entrance certificate, an ACE, uh, or a pre-technology Ontario college certificate, uh, or you can also have an Ontario high school equivalency certificate and any grade 12 math college or university level and also mature applicants with uh, standing in the required courses as all the ones that you stated above. So recommended prep, uh, grade 12 transportation technology college level, grade 11 or grade 12 physics college or university. And it's recommended that students in the advanced and career entrance certificate program take a technical or apprenticeship mathematics course within the ACE program. So our content, so our aircraft maintenance and our three-year maintenance in avionics, we have a 50-50 split. So that means 50% of your time is spent on practical lab, hands-on learning, touching the aircraft, engines, and different components. 
Our avionics program is the same. We have a 50-50 uh, of practical and the other 50 is your theory. Uh, the theory currently is online, um, but may change back to face-to-face -to -face, uh, following COVID, uh, but we will see how that works out. Uh, and our aircraft structural uh, repair is a 40-60 split. So 40% of your time is hands-on learning uh, and the other 60% is your lecture uh, theory portion. So for Transport Canada, this is a big one specific for us. All of our programs have a Transport Canada accreditation with them. And in order to obtain that certification, you must achieve a minimum 70% grade average in both theory and practical for all subjects in the course. So what that means is, uh, let's say you have a piston engine course, you need 70% in the theory for that piston engine course and 70% in the practical for that course in order to obtain TC, uh, Transport Canada accreditation. In addition to all that, you need to maintain a 95% attendance throughout the entire length of your program. So structures, that's 95% of your one year. Maintenance avionics, that's 95% over the two years. And the AVI three-year program is 95% attendance over the three years of that program. If you've achieved all of those uh, milestones at the end of the program, you will get Transport Canada certification. That means the time here with us at Fanshawe is accredited towards your licenses with Transport. So with our aircraft maintenance, uh, our two-year program, you get 18 months experience and knowledge accreditation. The same for our two-year avionics program. The aircraft maintenance and avionics combined program, you get 24 months accreditation towards that. Because it covers maintenance and avionics, that 24 months can only go towards one of those categories. So you take all of your 24 and apply it to a maintenance license if that's what you decide, or you take all of your 24 and apply it to your E or avionics license if that's what you prefer. Uh, it can't be split between the two categories. For our structures program, we have 10 months accreditation towards your license. So some safety uh, requirements we have here, you need to have safety boots at all times in the shop. So any footwear that has the CSA green triangle on it meets the requirements. So it could be shoe, could be full on boot, whatever you prefer, as long as it's got that green triangle uh, to meet the standard for safety. Also, our safety glasses are required at all times, again, in the shop. Uh, CSA approved as well, but they cannot be tinted for safety concerns. Textbooks, uh, there's a link there below. You can go to your specific programs. You can find the exact textbooks you need, uh, and all of our material is derived out of those textbooks. So they're, they're a very good resource for you. So all of our programming is offered here at the airport campus at the London International Airport. We are right beside the terminal building. Uh, so we're right on uh, the main apron, main runway uh, of a live airport. Uh, so you see the aircraft movements uh, throughout the day, which is a nice advantage. Up for questions. So um, again, I just want to prompt our attendees to uh, put your questions in the in the feature box there. Um, I have some of my own that I'm going to uh, start off with here. So um, one question that I often get when touring the campus is about the distance from main campus. So um, maybe you guys could talk a bit about um, what the schedule for the day looks like or for the week looks like for students in the program. Sure, I can answer that. So nor normally what happens in a normal day is um, if you're at the main campus in residence for example it's just down the street on Oxford Street it's one bus ride straight up um, it's it's not very far at all um, and even if you actually uh, even if you actually um, um, drive a car the got quite the large parking lot too as well um, the, the 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 thing the thing with the, our schedule changes daily, but normally we're about eight o'clock in the morning. We start either theory or practical, and we go to about three o'clock in the afternoon. Because of COVID right now, we're pushing to about six o'clock at night to keep spacing out of students and stuff like that. So, but normally we're a Monday to Friday, 
um, six hour day type of school. So it's almost like a, a job. So you're at school every day. Um, there's a question here from one of our guests. Can you combine the structures program and the maintenance diploma? Is there any advantage to doing that, I guess? So you can't, um, they're two distinct programs, so they can't be merged, but it's very uh, common to see students take one and then the other. So when they're finished, so for example, take maintenance first, they have a two-year diploma, two, uh, their 18 months accreditation towards maintenance license. They then return and take the one-year structures, and that has accreditation towards their structures license. Uh, they can then move forward to, um, whichever they prefer, one of the licenses. Uh, but it's not uncommon to see uh, aircraft maintenance engineers in the field have a M license or maintenance and then a structures addition to it. Uh, Paul's a good example of that. Right on. Um, another question that uh, I have here is, uh, is there a difference between the co-op and the non-co-op program? Um, yeah, well, so the, the co-op program the, the, the school or a co-op coordinator will 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 help in you securing a a job at a airline that has um, supported us in the co-op program. There's no by mo no means a guarantee you'll get a job if you're in the co-op program because there's a lot of airlines that participate in the co-op program and some that do not. Um, so for your learning, coming to the hangar, taking theory and practical, there is no difference. You could be working beside a co-op student, uh, being a non-co-op student, you would know the difference. It's just a, a separate little program that's done after hours from the normal uh, maintenance program. All right, another question from our guests here is, um, this may make more sense to you guys because you're in the, in the industry here, but uh, where do you go next to get your full license after you take these courses? Like what would next steps for someone if they wanted to get more licensing maybe or? The, the good the good thing about and it's not it's it's hard to say right now because of COVID and aviation but aviation was booming um, quite quite a lot of airlines were looking for a lot of job a lot of people before COVID happened and and we're very confident that once this ends they'll they'll still be looking for the same people so in, in answer to your question airlines come to the hangar here and do a bunch of interviews for potential students um, so we just tell students in their final semester of schools to submit resumes to the places that they would like to go see work and and it could be any airline it could be WestJet, Jazz, Air Canada, it could be New United Goddard's just outside of town here um, and even Diamond uh, which is a manufacturing plant right beside us is looking for people so it, it depends on where you would like to go in the country what, com what company you'd work for but the jobs are you know at before COVID were very plentiful and we're pretty confident they will be after COVID is over as well. Right on. Um, so you had put up that uh, there was some academic preparation you guys recommended. So it wasn't an admission requirement. This person's asking, what if you don't have physics? So I know you don't need to have physics to get into the program, but what would be yeah. maybe the like purpose of taking physics? Like how much of an advantage would that give you? Uh, well, for we find that some students uh, struggle um, in our program when it comes to math. There is math in our program. It's sprinkled throughout the entire program. Um, from my standpoint as a coordinator of avionics there is a, a lot of math ohm's law for example and and stuff like that that physics help because it's formulas whereas in math sometimes it just uh you don't take as many formulas as you would in physics physics just a little higher learning when it comes to math and in the maintenance program uh, when it comes to aerodynamics piston engines maybe you have to figure out uh, horsepower um, again physics helps it's you're right it's not mandatory you don't have to it just helps you with your math preparation in our program. Um, another question we have here is uh, what's the class size for the program? So like when you're in a class, how many people can you expect to be in your class with you? So our, uh, our common uh, setup right now is uh, both years are split into two groups, an A group and a B group. Uh, one of the groups is generally around the 60 student mark. So on the floor, you'll have 60 students. You'll have three professors in there. And the second group is around 40 students with two professors. Um, so depending on which section you're in, you're, you're going to be in roughly one of those two cohorts. Yeah, one thing I'll say I'll add to that is often when I go for tours of the hangar, I see people working in smaller cohorts and like breakaway groups too. Is that correct to assume that's 
Correct. A lot of the projects, you obviously can't have a large number of students uh, on it at once, uh, size of the aircraft or whatever the, the task may be. But at the same time, a lot of the tasks, you need a, a helper. You need someone to, to assist. Uh, so it's very common. A lot of the modules and subjects we have of those, say, 40 or 60 students, we'd have groups of three or four that would go and do the different projects together as a small group to assist each other and uh, rotate through that, those tasks. Right. Um, how many hours are required to get your license? So it's a 48 uh, month total uh, or minimum to get your license, whether that's an M, an E, uh, S is 36. 36. Correct. So uh, maintenance and avionics, you get 18 months. If you meet those Transport Canada accreditation requirements, you get 18 months towards those 48. So when you're finished here with us, You'll go out, like Kelly said, it could be with WestJet or Canada, it could be anywhere in the industry. There's there's a countless options. And you would go and complete your remaining 30 months of apprenticeship with one of those or several of those companies uh, to achieve your 48 total or 36 for structures. Okay. Um, there's a question for structures here. How many professors will you have in that program? So, uh, Structures program, we have two full-time professors and generally about two part-time professors. So a total of four professors. And uh, the two professors have 10 years teaching experience at the college, myself being one. And I have, uh, hard to believe, uh, probably about 40 years experience working on airplanes and the other fellows 25 years experience. So we have a lot of experience. Right on. So four professors. Um, yeah, second question for structures, how many students are in the program? We average around 30, sometimes it'll be 40, sometimes down around 20. And if the class size gets big, when we do our lab days, we split it in half. So we're looking at from 10 to 20 students maximum when we're in the lab. So it, um, they get a lot of one-on-one -on -one time because the classes are small. And when we're in the classroom, 30 students is a great number and 40, 40 is not, bad either so it is a pretty reasonable number all right um, there is an admissions kind of question here um, you put the admission requirements up uh, earlier but is this a competitive program and what kind of entry marks are have been needed in the previous years are we are we still asking the, the structures this isn't or they haven't kind of specifically asked about a, a program so maybe if you could just speak to the aviation programming as a whole like i usually recommend for people i speak to to apply before february 1 if they want a chance at definitely maintenance um, yeah, it, uh, is it is a first come first serve so we do recommend people register early and we do have uh, large numbers and we are able to accommodate large numbers but we do have there is a high demand for all three programs here at the college yeah, yeah, I, I would probably just echo that. I would say that uh, you want to apply before the equal consideration deadline. And um, I also have noticed on Ontario colleges that the co-op program often closes first. So so if you're interested in getting that co-op uh, program, I would definitely go before February 1 for your application. Uh, I have a question um, that wasn't asked by a guest, but I think is important for them to know. What kind of amenities do you have at the hangar there? Well, it's, it's funny you ask. We're really not sure ourselves because we're under construction. So the whole upper floor has been gutted and uh, there's new classrooms up there, new washrooms. It's uh, brain spanking new upstairs. We, we haven't even gone upstairs ourselves. Um, down in the main level, uh, there is no cafeteria here that you would normally think that you would get in a college. We have a cafeteria where you can go sit and eat, but we have a small area that has vending machines that have sandwiches and microwave dinners and stuff like that. So um, obviously in the future, we're hoping that we have some kind of a cafeteria that you would have at a normal college. I shouldn't say normal college, but at a main campus somewhere. Um, but that's uh, something in the future that we'll have to deal with. Uh, but currently it's just sandwiches and vending machines. But at the terminal, once COVID's over, there is a Tim Hortons um, and restaurants fairly close by. Yeah, every time I go there, it seems like you guys are adding new, new features and stuff. So it is a growing campus for sure. Um, 
Another thing about the, the food services, um, I've noticed many of our students stay in residence, they take the bus, so you have access to a ton of food services there. So uh, is there still like a fridge and microwave um, in yeah. that main area there? Yeah, so you can bring food from, from home or from main campus um, and then heat it up or keep it, keep it cold in the fridge there too. Um, I'm running at the end of my questions here from the guests. Does anybody have some more questions about the programs? Well, there's a couple things that uh, some people might be interested in when they're on the fence. That, um, a, a lot of schools in the country um, and in Ontario uh, request students to have their own tools when they come to class. Um, here at Fanshawe, we supply tools. So in the maintenance program, there is toolboxes that uh, you use on a daily basis. Um, in the structures department, they have racks and racks of uh, structure tools. And in avionics, we have multiple labs with tools that the student does not have to purchase uh, on top of his tuition um, as well. And uh, like we mentioned before, the, the terminal, the, the London International Airport has been so kind to us that they now have bus service that comes. And I, I, it, is, it is not very far. You just walk across a parking lot, which is not very big to get to class, and it drops you right off of the terminal. So even on a wet, rainy day, you're going to get to the hangar no problem without getting soaking wet so uh, we're very lucky when it comes that way uh got another question from the guests here so this person has a structure certificate with tc accred can they apply for the maintenance slash avionics program with that or do they need to still go get their math and english credits they got to do something or a certificate that uh, is a criteria that's okay to get into the program so yeah, yeah, that okay. would be like mature student or qualifications. Okay. Um, another another question that I have: um, What is the split of of men and women in the program? Is there a, is there a lot of women in the program? We're uh, getting more and more, to be honest with you. So, yeah. um, in my current class, I have uh, first year class in maintenance, and I have uh, five females in my class, um, and the uh, the B group, they have three females in their class. Um, avionics has about two first year students and in the second years. Second year, I, I believe we're at five as well for the second year maintenance program. Yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's getting better over the years as we become uh, a more known, but uh, it's, uh, females in the, in the industry is, is, is needed for sure. And also uh, what kind of, as well. yes. Yeah, okay. Um, what kind of salary should students expect after graduating from maintenance? Well, that's a difficult question depending on where you go in the country, obviously. But uh, I know at one time they were offering apprentices in the Toronto area about $20 an hour to start. So it is more than minimum wage. But, you know, I like to be frank with people that a lot of companies um, will start you off at minimum wage um, or a little bit more. Um, around you know 13 maybe 14 dollars an hour but there has been companies that understand that they need people and that their wages are getting better and uh, I've seen 20 dollars to 21 dollars for starting for apprentices right out of school even in the GTA area all right another question for maintenance um, I'm understanding that you provide tools on campus are there any tools that students should buy for themselves for future use or at home use? Uh, we, so we provide all that you need here during the program for, for all our different tasks. Uh, we, we do have a tool list that uh, finishing the program you can take with you to purchase your own uh, toolbox and kit. Uh, but also you'll get an idea from using the tools we provide throughout the program of what you use more often and, and what you want to you know, maybe grab first for your own personal tools. But during the program, you won't need to purchase or, or use any of your own equipment. Yes, and I um, I understand that that's not, uh, that's not common across the college system. Um, there's a question here. Um, some of the language, maybe I just don't understand because I'm not in the industry, but it says we have a composites and advanced materials, I think aerospace manufacturing coming for 2021. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if there's a session for that because it's a new program, but do you guys have any information about that? Do you have some details, Paul? 
So the, the Composites or Advanced Materials program was scheduled to start um, this intake September, but it was put on hold because of COVID. They currently have approximately six composite specialists developing the program uh, from all areas, the, from marine, aviation, automotive. Uh, some of the professors developing it are also teaching at Western, and they plan to launch that program in September 2021. That's currently the plan for that. All right, another question I have here. Um, do you take all of your classes at the hangar or do you have classes on main campus as well? Um, all of our aviation courses are done here at the campus. Currently all theory is done online, so it's a blended delivery, but all your practical for the program is here at the hangar. The only thing that may be at the main campus is your general gen, gen eds, your general electives. Um, we try to get them here at the hangar, and of course, they're all online now too anyways, but um, once COVID's over, we do try to get some gen eds here at the hangar. It's a little easier for the students to leave class and go right into their gen ed, uh, but that's the only time that you might have to go to the main campus is to take one of those uh, courses. Okay. How many uh, general electives are in the program? Nine credits, I guess. Okay. There's been quite a lot of questions, guys, so keep them coming. This has been good. Um, is there anything that we have uh, missed that you guys have on your mind? Uh, just other things that people should expect or know about the industry? If you uh, receive a license here in Canada, um, it, does that qualify you to work in internationally, or is there any restrictions on that? You can work on you can work internationally on Canadian products. So you get Canadian license, you have to work on a Canadian registered airplane. And usually, how you tell what a Canadian registered airplane is like, it starts with C, C dash G or C dash F. Um, so you could be you could be in Jamaica working on a Canadian registered airplane under there at AMO. That's with it's fine. But if the question is, can I go to um, China, for example, and work on a Chinese airline under a Canadian license, you'd have to contact their regulatory body and see if you can get credit for your schooling here, which more than likely you probably could. Where Canadian aviation uh, education is is actually quite popular in the world, and they do allow you know you to take that accreditation and count it towards some licenses in the world. But right now, you'd have to work on a Canadian registered airplane, uh, airplane abroad. Okay. Um, what is the attrition rate like for the program? How many people inevitably end up, you know, dropping out, not for them, or they struggle with the content? Not even five percent. Yeah. So that that varies year to year, obviously. Uh, so I I guess I could take the second year maintenance program right now, for example. So we currently have, let's see, thirty five six. So we have uh, approximately ninety, just over ninety students in the second year program or second year of the program. And we started with 120, so very few uh, drop. And some of those, it's not even uh, course related; they just personal reasons or or other things. They decide to step back and, and return to the program. Um, but for the most part, the attrition rate is very small. Okay. And we uh, we talked about um, admissions a little, or sorry, not admissions, um, salary for employment but do you know anything about like the employment prospects understanding that covid has thrown a big wrench in that but under normal circumstances with a booming industry um do you know like roughly a percentage of uh graduates finding employment well before covid hit um in the i i won't speak for the structures program but usually they almost have a hundred percent higher rate in the structures program because they're very uh, sought after Avionics program, from my st standpoint, it's at least 95%. They're very highly sought after too, as well. With the maintenance program, um, it, it was in the 90s too, as well, prior to COVID, for people getting jobs. And I like to say, again, prior to COVID, if you take a map of the country, pick a place where you think you'd like to work. If there's an airport there, you probably could find a job. That's that's how plentiful jobs were before COVID-19 hit, um, unfortunately. And and again. We're pretty confident that it'll bounce back, but it's just going to take a while. Um, but 
from, from a structures point of view and an avionics standpoint, they're always looking for people like that ever since we've started this program. All right. Um, and then going back to the salary, um, there's a person asking here, like, once you're well equipped in your career um, and you have your AME license, uh, what can you expect? Maybe a, like a senior salary. So that uh, I, when I left Air Canada Jazz, a person that just had just become licensed, so you just finished your apprenticeship and now you're licensed, with an endorsement was $27 an hour. Um, and that was back in, in uh, about uh, seven years ago. So you can, you're talking, you know, definitely in the 30 to $40 range of uh, wages if you're a senior mechanic with a few endorsements for sure. Okay. To follow with that one too, um, there's all kinds of different parts of the industry as well. So my experience, I traveled internationally with, like Kelly mentioned, uh, Canadian aircraft. Uh, so usually that's specialized work or specialized operations. So you're with an aircraft gone for anywhere from two to six months, maybe sometimes more. And in special circumstance like that, you, you can make uh, a very good wage because they're paying for your accommodations, your food, everything. So you're able to um, uh, retain more of your pay. So it, it depends a lot on which sector of the industry you, uh, you find yourself in. Um, we can see a couple couple of the aircraft uh, behind you. Do you guys want to maybe highlight some of the different kinds of aircraft that we have in the hangar there, or or how many? Yeah, we have uh, we have a variety. We have uh, we'll consider M1 airplanes, which we have about we have three we have four Cessna 150s. We have a couple Cessna 172s, and we have a few uh, Piper. We have a Piper Tomahawk. A warrior, so so some PA 23s. We just got recently a, an Aztec, uh, twin Aztec uh, two here as well for M1 aircraft, um, and we have some larger airplanes. We have a Hawker 400, which is like a corporate jet. We have a Falcon 10, which is also like a corporate jet too as well. Um, and for rotary wing, uh, we have a Bell 206 and a an, uh, Robertson R22 um, in our fleet too as well. And a Dash 7. So that's uh, probably at this stage the largest airplane that we have here uh, is a Dash 7. Yeah, that Dash 7's uh, pretty cool. And you go in it, it looks like you're back in the 70s. It's right in the interior. <laughs> um, is, sorry, what'd you say? I can actually pick up the laptop and just give you a scan of the entire hangar if you'd like to see it. Yeah, I think that would be cool. Yeah, if we could do that. All right. Students have covered, we're working on reciprocating engines, so they've covered things up for the night. Uh, what you're basically seeing right now is past the hangar. And then a, a big portion of our aircraft is stored outside. Kelly mentioned in the two helicopters, corporate jets, aircraft on floats. There's actually an aircraft on floats in the background here that's hidden behind the music. And then our shops are all located along the outer perimeter of the hangar. Yeah, I always think that the uh, the hangar is one of those spaces that Fanshawe has where you walk in and it's it's pretty mind blowing the size and the scale of the equipment. And that's across all programs at Fanshawe, really. It's one of the ones that blows me away. And the aircraft are always moving around just depending on what the service is. I would say we're probably. Uh... The, the second, at least the second, or tied for first, the largest aviation uh, hangar in the country. Um, not sure about Centennial in Toronto. We're pretty close to Centennial in Toronto. BCIT is another big one uh, out west. Uh, but but sitting, we're sitting here about 80,000 square feet in the hangar alone. Yeah, that actually that actually leads me to a question I was just going to ask. Um, 
how would you compare our program to other, you know, uh, bigger name programs in the country or just in the province even? I, I'd say it's our hands-on. Um, not to not to comment on other programs, um, but most of theirs are are usually um, you know 60-40, so 60% uh, theory, 40% practical. Some are even lower than that, like 70-30. Well, when we say we're 50-50, it is it is true. So three hours of your day are touching something in the hangar with a, an aircraft, and then the other three hours is online. Of course, that changes because of COVID. We're now in four-hour labs and four-hour theory to get things uh, caught up. But you 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 are hands-on. My students are taking apart piston engines right now, and uh, Tim's students here are actually doing composite layup. So there is a lot of hands-on here. That's what I would say that takes us apart from other schools is because is we have that. And, um, um, would you say that because of the nature of the program, um, how much how much homework should students expect? Like how much time should they expect to be, you know, um, using for for uh, the program once they're leaving the hangar? Uh, that would uh, a lot depend on uh, the, the specific subject, usually with the practical portion, that is all done here because you need the tools and the equipment. There may be some research or prep that you can do ahead of time or, or at home. Uh, so most of the time spent at home is going to be reviewing your theory, your lecture, studying, um, maybe doing some practice work to, to get a better grasp on the, on the subject. And of course, obviously, the harder the subject, the more you need uh, of that time. But uh, uh, a, a few hours every night if you plan to just review your material and just uh, go over what you went through that day it'll just uh, help you stay uh, on top of everything because it's a fairly um, uh, fast-paced program like we go from one subject to the next to the next so uh, we, we give you the time but also we, we do have to get through all of the subjects in our uh, allotted time for the program all right so I'll give uh, our guests a couple more seconds here to ask any final questions. I know we have the full hour, but I think we've gotten quite a lot here. Are you guys good with that? Mm -hmm. Yep. Right on. So I'm yeah, not, I would definitely, sorry, go ahead. I'm not sure uh, if anybody heard that Tim had mentioned before, somebody had asked about um, how many uh, female students we have in the, in the program. I would say probably, we're one of the few colleges in the country that has a female professor um, that teaches here too. So a fully licensed uh, AME um, as well as a private pilot. So we're quite proud that she's here helping us out too as well. So um, we're again, one of the few country, uh, country companies that have colleges that have that. That's good to know. Is that Nikki? That is Nikki, yeah. Okay, well, I think we'll maybe we'll leave it at that, about 40 minutes here. Um, I want to thank you guys very much for your time. Nice to see you again. It's been quite a few months since I've been down to the hangar. Um, and before I hang, I log off here, let's just say if you have any more specific questions about the aviation programming, uh, you can email Kelly at kmoffat at fanshawc.ca. And again, if you have questions about other things about being a Fanshawe student, feel free to connect with myself or one of my colleagues at fanshawec.ca slash connect or email myfuture at fanshawec.ca. Any final thoughts, guys, before we sign off here? No, hope to see everybody in September. Yeah, me too. All right. Have a good one. Thank right, you. Bye now.